All right, so first thing we want to work the dog. Uh, this is Judah. He's a young guy. He's only, uh, look at you, just volunteering our heel position. This is the heel position. This is exactly where we want to bring the dog. Um, every single time that we bring him out, he's going to move around and stuff, and we're going to work this pressure release technique to get him back to the heel position so we can pull up and create our sit and praise. Okay, every single time we sit, we praise. Now, once we get that, okay, my next goal is to teach right 180s and left 180s to the dog during the heel all right we can do this with the nose loop on as well as with it used as a, the transitional leash used as a slip line okay when i use it um we're going to actually start with the transitional leash okay easy there friend he doesn't want to wear it like that so we're gonna just try that again Good. Bring this out, make it real big. We have another video on how to put this thing on and off um, that you should already have in your inbox. Okay, now I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna work the nose loop to get him to understand that he needs to stay seated. If he stays seated, I'll go ahead and take it off as a reward and put it back to the slip line because he doesn't want this on. So if he gets the idea and decides that he's just gonna keep sitting, which he's doing really well, I'm gonna keep giving him some love and telling him that he's doing the right thing. And then as soon as we decide that he's sat here long enough and absolutely understands that the nose loop means sitting, then I'll take it off. We'll go back to the slip line and we'll begin, well, we're gonna get him back in a sit and then we're gonna begin to teach the right 180s and the left 180s. Now we start with our left foot foot first every single time, that's very important. Judah, heel, left foot first. Now, we're going to start with the right 180, and a right 180, lovely, another right 180, and we're coaching him through the turns, lovely, no tension on that one, a little tension here, and release, so we're using that same pressure release technique that we learned last week, to get him and coach him around, now you can see I'm getting a lot better attention on these turns, he's starting to pay attention better, so as soon as I get that attention, I'll morph it into left 180s where we cut him off, okay? Now you might notice my environment is on a porch. It's a very small porch. These types of areas that are only like, what, maybe 10 by 20 or 10 by 15 are perfect for this. This rectangular shape gives me the ability uh, to block his view so that he doesn't get triggered by cats or other dogs walking by or people walking by so then I'm able to keep my uh, pressures really light and mild until he gets a chance to learn it. Okay, now that he's sitting we're going to go back to the nose loop. Gonna cinch that down. Okay, we're going to hold still for a sec and make sure that he understands that if he just relaxes and sits that we don't put pressure on him. Now I'm going to attempt to use the nose loop to heal him in the same way that I just did with the slip line. Alright, so what I'm doing is mimicking two behaviors. We already taught him to sit using the slip line as well as the nose loop. So he understands we can use both tools for the same behavior. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the heel. So on the heel I use the slip line for the right 180s and the left 180s. Now I want to try to use the nose loop for the right 180s and the left 180s. So we're mimicking the behaviors, going back and forth, same behaviors, but we're switching the tool from the slip to the transitional. Now my goal, when we move forward, is to show him how to keep it loose, which means that I'm going to do everything I can, including using an environment that is small like this. I'm going to try everything I can to keep that line from going tight and putting pressure on his muzzle here, okay? Judah, heel, left foot first. Now, I gave him an auditory cue. Now you'll see that he'll bend down and try to take the tool off every now and then. Good. I, 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 I. We punish that out by pulling straight up on the line. So if he reaches down to try to take the tool off, we have to pull straight up on the lead until he gets into a sit and punish out that behavior. Let's try to heel again, okay? Judah, heel. Back into our right 180s. 
Good boy. Now you see there, if he will just move nicely, everything stays super loose. And there's no reason for tension. Good. Ah, ah. The only time tension comes is when he does that and tries to take the tool off. Okay? This is going really good. We're going to try to move back into our left 180s. Due to heel. Now on the left, we cut off his movement. You'll notice my left hand's creating a mild tension backwards. I'm really just trying to get him out of my way so I don't have to run into him. Good. Now you'll notice though that this brings the dog behind us. They tend to walk behind us, which creates the heel. And if he sits nicely, we loosen the line. Okay? Now he did a great job. So we go back to the slip line and repeat the entire process. Okay? So one repetition on the slip line, switch over and do the same thing with the nose loop on. Then another one on the slip line, then another one with the nose loop, then another one on the slip line, and back and forth and back and forth until he can do either one flawlessly. Okay? Bo Harrison, CrankyK9DogTraining.com. If you have any questions, uh, email us.